Just before Christmas, the School of Computing at my university ran a small game programming competition, and I decided I would enter it. Like all competitions, there were rules and limitations in place, so let's quickly go through these now. Rule 1, we had to use Python using a library called graphics.py, which isn't exactly a good library for making games at all, as it was specifically created for educational purposes and so it was very basic. Rule 2, we were not allowed to use other libraries such as Pygame. Rule 3, we were not allowed to create our own classes or types, which while annoying, it was likely in place to keep the contest fair for everyone, as we hadn't actually covered the classes yet at the university at the time of the competition. And lastly, for some reason, it had to be a game about either an android eating apples, or a squash ball game. And as you've already seen in my last video, I decided to go with the android eating apples. So without any further ado, let's get into this. To start off, I wanted to create a game state system to make it easier to organise the different stages of the game, such as the main menu and the game itself. Now as mentioned in a previous video, I always implement this kind of system using polymorphic classes, but of course the rules of the competition would not allow this, so I have to find another way. What I did instead was created some constant to represent an ID of a game state, as seen here. I could then set a variable to one of these values and then jump to the different functions for those game states using some if statements. And it actually ended up working pretty well. So after creating the game state system, the next thing I wanted to do was to create some code for the player and drawing the android character. Now I don't know why I did what I did, but I probably really overcomplicated this. Rather than just loading up an image, for some reason I decided to load up vertex positions of the android from a text file and put them into a polygon object. While completely unnecessary, it was quite fun to implement anyway and it ended up working just fine. So now that I have the player drawing, it was time to actually get it to move around using keyboard input. Usually this is really simple to do, but I had to use graphics.py which doesn't have very good keyboard support. Now this means that I would hit a key to move the player and it would move a tiny bit, stop for a second, before starting to move again. Now this kind of thing is awful for responsiveness, so I tried the best I could to fix this using some tricks with velocity values. And it ended up working fairly okay, but not exactly great obviously. So now that I had the basics, it was time to actually think about what I wanted the game to be. This was quite hard to do, as it had to be a game about an android eating apples, but I wanted it to be a bit more exciting than that. And so I decided to make the game similar to something I made a couple of years ago, in fact one of my first videos on this channel. This was a simple game called Pyoro, and I thought I would simply put my own twist on this for the competition game. So my take on the concept was fairly simple. Apples would fall from the sky, and you would catch them. Each time you catch an apple, you get a point. However, if you miss an apple, then it would destroy the tiles that the player is walking on. When the tiles are destroyed, it limits the area that the player is able to walk. If the apples get past the tiles, then you lose a life. If you run out of life, then it's game over. In the video right now, I have been creating the code for the apples falling from the sky and then destroying the tiles the player is walking on, as well as making it so the player cannot walk on destroyed tiles. And this can be seen working right here, the apples destroy the tiles and the player is then limited to where they can walk. Another thing that I wanted to add was the ability for the player to throw apples that they had caught at the apples currently falling before they hit the tiles. However, the penalty for doing this would be minus one point. So this was implemented using some vector maths. So first of all, I took the x and the y difference between the player and the mouse, and then I would normalise this vector to make the magnitude equal to 1 while its direction stays the same. And then finally, I would multiply this vector by a scale speed value, which would result in the final velocity of the apple. And this can be seen working right here. The next feature that I wanted to add were different apple types. For now, the only apple in the game was the one that added a single point to your score when you caught it, which was kind of boring, so I wanted to add some more. Now, this sort of thing would have been quite easy to implement if I was allowed to use classes, but of course, I'm not allowed to use them in this competition. So, I had to ask myself, how on earth am I going to differ between different apple types in the code? My solution to this was to have different apple types to have a... The apples are drawn using the class defined in the graphics.py module called circle, of which has a function called getRadius. So after creating the apples using the different radius, I could then differ between the different apple types by getting the circle's radius when I needed to, for example when the player collects the apple. 
The new apple types added can be seen here. When the player collects the red apple, it just adds score as it did before, but when collecting the green apple, it repairs all the broken tiles, and when collecting the yellow apple, it adds some lives. After this, I wanted to add some kind of game over screen and a main menu. The main menu would have different options such as play game and exit game and the game over screen would show the player's score and give them the option to either play again or return to the main menu. However, before I could actually implement these menus, I first had to actually implement the components a menu needs, such as buttons. Again, doing this is quite awkward about classes as you would typically create some kind of button class which would hold the callback function set by the user of the button class. So instead I had to go with a much less clean approach where the individual button functionalities are implemented using their own if statement. While this is very unmaintainable, it still works just fine. The first basic version of the main menu and the game over screen can be seen working here using the new buttons. However, the menu was looking very bland and so I decided I'd make it look a lot more exciting by just making some apples fall in the background of the menu. After this, I decided I would try and add some kind of high score system to the game. This would allow players to submit their score after they get a game over and see how good or bad they are compared to other players. To do this, I present a text box to the player to enter their name if they wish to add themselves to the high score. When the player presses the submit score button, it will load up the high scores from a file into a dictionary. It will then add the player's high score to it. And then finally, the dictionary is sorted based on the scores, and then I just rewrite this back into the file. The submission screen for the high scores can be seen working here, and then the high scores themselves can be seen here. The final thing I wanted to do was actually make the game look good, rather than how bland it's currently looking now. And so I opened up good old paint.net and started to make some images for the use of the background of the game, uh, of which of the ones being shown created here didn't actually end up being used in the final game. And well, the finished game can be seen being played right now! As you can see, all of the menus are fully implemented, such as the how to play menu and the high scores, and it's looking a lot better now that I've added the background to the game. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, I'm sorry I have not uploaded in a while, but university has just, in general, kept me extremely busy. And lastly, I just want to especially thank all my patrons who have continued to support me despite my lack of uploads in the last few months, so thank you to everyone listed here. So anyways, once again, thank you for watching, and goodbye.